Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show with uh, your daily fix of football chat. Uh, the main talking points, Rangers lose the big tax case to HMRC. They've also lost £7 million in their latest set of accounts. Hibs have a Premiership scalp on their view tonight in the League Cup quarterfinal against Dundee United. And Jackie McNamara is back in management at York City. Just a few of the topics we will be discussing on the programme tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and we are joined um, by a legend. It's as simple as that. We've got two legends, but uh, one of them is Murdo McLeod, who's our boot room guest tonight. Delighted to have Murdo along with us. Uh, lots to talk about, lads. Um, I'm, not, I'm looking at you now and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I don't expect chapter and verse on the legalities of it, um, but let's get into the meat and bones of it, Ruffy. Um, suddenly, HMRC has won uh, the big tax case. Um, I'm not so sure of the financial implications at the moment and where they're going to try and retrieve the money. Although I have to point out to you at this point that um, the case itself could go to another appeal at the Supreme Court. Um, but it does have implications um, for Rangers uh, losing this case. And I think it sets a precedent as well for other cases that HMRC want to pursue. Yeah, well, I think that was the main reason they did pursue it. You know, there are a lot of uh, other people out there still doing it and uh, to win that case uh, gives them the upper hand you're right we don't really know the complications of it uh, but it's not something that Rangers would want just now particularly when they're playing so well on the park and everything going well on the park it's falling back into old times again you know most of the stuff you're reading about Rangers now is out with the football and you don't want that as a player you want to concentrate and uh, the sooner they, they get it out of the road the better uh, Murdo, the story is a minefield and it has been uh, unfolding year by year and certainly I don't think any of us second-guessed the way it was ultimately going to end but um, the implications in a sporting sense here uh, is if this stands uh, questions will undoubtedly uh, uh, arise uh, as to whether they should be stripped of titles now that's a long way off Yeah, but that, that's going to be a really tough one and a big decision as well we've waited long enough for the HMRC to go and challenge it, and they've won their, their case now, so it's going to be difficult for Rangers, Alan touched on it, off the park just now is going to be horrendous for them just now, because it's hard enough just to keep the club going the way they're going just now, but all these problems now with Ashley and the, the owner just now, and now with HMRC, it's, it's cost them an awful lot of money, money they've not got. Yeah, um, I think that story will develop, um, whether it goes again uh, to the Supreme Court for the last leg of a, a possible appeal, only time uh, will tell. Up to the present day, suddenly we see the latest set of accounts. Uh, Rangers have lost over £7.5 million. It looks as if they're going to need a £2.5 million injection of cash uh, as well, Ruffy. Um, how would you view the latest set of accounts? Well, obviously, uh, they're relying on the, the, the people who have been backing them before. They can't have a share issue. Uh, the worrying thing for me would be where is all the money going? You know, we're led to believe there was cuts all over the place. The players were on reasonable wages, and uh, but they're still hemorrhaging money, and that must be something that the new owners uh, must be seriously looking at because uh, it was that was the case that put them into the trouble in the first place, overspending. So it's interesting the manager coming out and saying, "Yep, yeah, I'm going to bring in two or three players." If you're hemorrhaging money, you know how can you bring in players? That that was a failing the last time. Rangers continued and continued to spend money when they didn't have it. Yep, um, just over 34,000 Rangers fans have backed uh, the current board. They're happy that they are Rangers men in there. Um, the staffing costs at the moment is about £6.2 uh, million. Pounds. And just picking up on uh, what uh, Ruffy was saying there, Murdo, um, you know, when you look at the case of the old case, what implications yeah. that has, we don't know. When you look at the current uh, court cases that are still hovering over the club as well. Um, this is these are difficult times for Rangers and difficult times for Dave King, who says he feels that the club has a much brighter future. I don't think many Rangers fans are actually looking and thinking about that right now. Not after the news today about the HMRC and now seven million. Obviously, that goes back the way. It's not up to present day that the seven million. So they have cut back. So obviously, they'll be looking at the. The finances just now, you know, they'll be happy the way things have gone. The, the new management team in and the new players are not earning as much money as the players in the past. So I think now, maybe on the pitch, it's much better financially. But I think there's more and more problems off the pitch. H HMRC coming in and Mike Ashley 
everybody felt he kind of pushed away out of the picture, but he's still there, and he's won, and it's the last person in the world you want to argue with, someone who's got more money than, than you, and I think Rangers, they've got to actually come to an agreement with Ashley at some point, because I don't think you can go and fight him, because if you go and fight Ashley, it'll cost them millions. Yeah, absolutely, and that is a good point, because I w probably won't argue with you, but I might argue with Ruffy, because <laughs> you're far wealthier than him in the long term. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope so. Um, uh, Ruffy, on that point that Murdo was making there, uh, again, that's another case that they will face at the High Court, which is quite simply, you know, uh, Mike Ashley is looking at Dave King and Rangers mm -hmm. um, because he feels as if there could have been a breach in, in the uh, deal that he has uh, with Rangers Commercial. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about it. The way that the, the deal structured, uh, if you're at Rangers, you wouldn't be happy with it because I mean, they never get into the deal. It was the people beforehand. Uh, but if there's one guy you don't want to be fighting, it's Mike Ashley. And uh, he will be prepared to go the whole hog and that's going to co cost more and more money, money they don't want to spend. Uh, so it's a really tough one. And at, for me, looking at it, I don't think they've went about it the, the right way. I think they've been threatening and threatening and threatening. And Mike Ashley certainly is, is not a, a guy you want to be threatening. Yeah, and uh, I don't think... You know, he's going to back off now. I think he's going to go the whole road. Just two quick questions to finish on this, and it goes back to what we were talking about at the start, Murdo. Do you think a number of Rangers players and, and, and former staff members uh, will be worried about HMRC winning this uh, part of the case because of the tax implications? I think you will be. Uh, obviously, at the time when Rangers won the initial challenge, and I think they were quite happy and they just moved on with their lives. But now it is something that, I thought in their minds now, if HMRC are going to chase after Rangers, maybe the ex-players at the, the football club. So I think if, if you're a player, you would be looking back and thinking you might have a big tax bill to pay. Yeah, and the last point I was going to make, Ruffy, which again is one of your old clubs, uh, Hibernian, that win at the weekend, significant because it draws them closer to Rangers in the title race. If you look at the implications of what happened last year uh, in the financial accounts of Rangers, Hibs hauling Rangers back mm -hmm. in the title would be a monumental disaster. Oh, it certainly would, and uh, the pressure would start to mount, there's no doubt about it. Uh, the, the closer they get, the, the better for Hibs. But I think the the Rangers management and players will, will have learned, you would like to think that they've learned from the mistakes of previous, you know, and they'd be concentrating in the football rather than what's happening off the park. But it just shows you... You know, in the last three or four months, all we've been doing is concentrating on what Rangers have been doing on the park. And now we're going back to the old days that the papers are just going to be full of what's happening what happening off the park. Yeah, and with that in mind, Murdo, I mean, I know a number of uh, fans of all clubs out with Rangers um, get a little bit prickly and upset about the suggestion that um, we need, you know, a, a Rangers uh, football club back in the top flight. It is a fact. It is a financial fact, yeah. I think, and, a, and it's also a competitive fact. Yeah, without a doubt. I think, obviously, Rangers are a far a, a distance away from getting back to what they were four, five, six years ago. The quality of players they had at the football club. If they manage to get up this year, then I don't know if got, they're, they're strong enough and they've got enough money to go and compete to win the, the title. I think they're a, they're a good side. They'd come in and they'd, they'd mix with the other sides in the, the top flight, but I don't think they're, they're strong enough to meet up with Celtic yet. So I think it's going to cost them a lot of money. But financially, I think Rangers fans turning up, and I know people would moan, oh, there's three or 4,000 Rangers, Rangers fans would turn up. That's fantastic, because most of the club just now, when you look at a lot of the clubs, their home gates, they're getting 3,000, they're getting 4,000 people, so they're going to double the amount that's turning up. And financially, that's a bonus to all the other clubs in the top flight. Yeah, despite what many a chairman will tell you, um, I think from the point of view of revenue for other clubs, that's the first bonus. The second bonus, I think, could be that it'll become more appealing uh, as a league if you've got at least a competitive edge to it and Celtic are not winning it year in, year out, Ruffy. Yeah, we, we want all the top clubs back. We've got Hearts back, we want Hibs back, we want Rangers back. Uh, as a player, as Murdo will say, oh, you want to test yourself against the big boys. Uh, and when they come coming, it's a fantastic day out for everybody concerned. And uh, it's good when it's competitive. Uh, we don't like to see anybody running away with anything. And, and you're right, the sooner they all get back, the better. Yeah, uh, uh, and if certain clubs don't get back, uh, I wouldn't rule out uh, Murdo 
sooner or later the SPFL looking at an extended league as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can't roll these things out. But, but that, that's the other thing Alan's touching on one or two uh, clubs that's no big names. You know, you've got St Mirren down there as well, you've got Falkirk with a great tradition, you've got Queen of the South there that's been doing well over the last two or three seasons, you've got Wraith Rovers up there just now, but I think we've got to maybe look at a change because I think we've got quality sides in the, in the lower league, whether we want to extend it or don't know. Okay, uh, coming up in the next part of the programme, we're going to talk about Alan Ruff and Murdo McLeod's old side, Hibernian. It's a League Cup quarter final and they're looking to get into the semis. Hi, I'm Chris Sutton. To win this beautiful signed shirt from me, which club did Celtic sign me from? Hi, I'm Craig Turnbull, and don't forget you can watch the PLZ Soccer News headlines Monday to Friday by clicking on the link below. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Uh, in the second part of the programme, we've got uh, a few big games to talk about. Uh, one of them is Hibs against Dundee United tonight, and of course, a massive game for Celtic. Uh, Malda against Celtic in the Europa League. Ronnie Dyla has been speaking earlier today uh, talking about this one as uh, really a must win if they're to get any hope of qualifying Murdo McLeod. Yeah, I think so. And obviously, I think the players are up for the game though. I think it'll be a good performance tomorrow night. I think after beating Hearts, beating Dundee United, beating Aberdeen. So it's a good run just now that they're on there. The confidence is high. And I think the players know beat on signing a new contract. That'll give him a boost. And Griffiths as well. No, Griffiths has been outstanding. Any game, any time you need a goal, he nicks your goal. So I think at this level, Celtic players have got to lift their game. They went up there to Molda a fortnight ago. They had so much of the ball and thinking, oh, this is easy because we're, we're in their half. But they're, they're playing a game. They're playing a the game. Bring Celtic in and hit Celtic in the counter-attack. Celtic's got to be very careful tomorrow night about the counter-attack again. Yeah, here's the here's the blow. First of all, Brown is out, um, which will be a blow to them from the middle of the park, Ruffy. Uh, Shimanovic is a doubt. If he doesn't make it, I think, you know, in that back line, Celtic fans will be heading to Celtic Park thinking it's, you know, there is that little fear again at set pieces. Yeah, if he doesn't make it, there's no doubt about that. You know, you saw, you could hear the sort of a gas in the air at the weekend there when they made the two substitutions when Ambrose came over and then lo and behold, a ball gets thrown into the box. Nobody goes and attacks it. And that's all you want. You just want somebody to go and attack the ball. And as long as these things are happening, these lacks of concentration, the other teams will play on it, particularly at European level as well. You know, any slackness at all. And Aberdeen in the first half, I think, had two or three chances. Uh, through just what we're talking about here, nobody attacking the ball, and they all have to really pitch in tomorrow night. It, does, it can't be a forty-five minute, fifty-minute show. It has to be a ninety-minute show. They have to show everybody that when they are playing particularly well, they can be unstoppable at times. The other thing, Peter, they don't need to go out and just say, "Oh, it's we're at Celtic Park. We're going to go and score four goals." A win is first and foremost. Even sometimes you think maybe take one of the offensive players off, sit in now and again. And I think Celtic's got to make sure, just win this game tomorrow night, get yourself three points in the bag, you're back into the race. Because there's no use going out, playing great football. Celtic in the past, playing great football, they always get the reward because they had strikers to score all the time. If Griffiths isn't, isn't scoring just now, then Celtic are looking for a, a goal scorer. And there's no one else coming in there with another goal. So Celtic's got to make sure, when they're under a wee bit of pressure, they're strong at the back, they're strong in the mid midfield area and don't give the ball away cheaply. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you, Murdo, and, uh, you know, Ruffy and myself really like you, but we don't want to get you banned or get a three-line whip letter, but <laughs> here's the question. Is he back under pressure, Ronnie Dyla, if he draws or loses that game? See, I'm not in the, the, the camp that if he loses the game, that it's, it's a European thing. I think, the, we always talk about it, domestically, he's got to make sure the, the league's a given. It's been given for the last couple of seasons, so... You're know, looking at cup competitions this year. I think he's got to be successful there. He's got to have good performances week in, week out. And I think going into next season, if he, if he doesn't qualify here just now, I don't think he'll be out the door. I think he'll get another chance at the start of next season. But Another crack at the Champions League Yes, I, I do. I, yeah. I, I honestly do. I think. And do you think, that's, well, a, do you think that's a... Uh, and I'm not... I'm playing devil's advocate. Do you yeah. think that's a £20 million pound risk? 
I, well, I think he's been fortunate enough. The players he's had in his squad, he sold two or three of them at ten million pound apiece. So I think that's made it a wee bit easier for Celtic not being in the Champions League. But Celtic then would need to then invest. It's not just a if it's a new manager. If it's a new manager comes in, Peter, you're looking at someone wanting to spend twenty million pounds just to get them to to the to win the, the title, to get them to the Champions League, and that's still a gamble. No one's guaranteed that they're going to get in. So I'm, I'm not going out and just saying that or Ronnie Daly, but I think he's got to have a good season here within the cup competitions as well. Winning the, the league is fantastic. That's the main aim. But we know that Celtic's already won that league. But the two cups, that's a challenge for them now because they've not been great over the last two or three seasons and they've got to make sure they get at least one of the two trophies. I, th I think he'll come under pressure from the, the supporters because they obviously want to still be in Europe. But it, can, it depends on what brief he's got from upstairs. If his brief is to continue by bringing in young players and selling them on, and that is the main thing, either the, then he'll get away with it. Yeah. You know, it depends yeah. what the owners, what they are saying <coughs> to him. Look, A, B, and C. This is what we want, and uh, the European thing at this moment in time might not be up in the top. Uh, of the again, pile. Peter, you're going back to the quality <coughs> of player that's arriving at Celtic Park. I'd like to know if the manager's got a, a big say on, or oh, this is the guy we want. Let's go and get him, and Celtic get him. Sometimes yeah. players arrive through other recommendations yes so they so you've got to fit him into the team so the coach just becomes a coach so sometimes so you don't know so you, and you've got to play and deal with the hand you've got so the players it's at Celtic Park just now that's yeah. what he's got to use but the players because I've seen them playing so often are good players when they all play well together yeah. and they've got to produce a good performance when they're under that wee bit of pressure and it takes me nicely to it depends <clears> on what the remit is the remit for Jackie McNamara or was to try and put a team on the part that played good football at Dundee United while reducing the debt. He, he reduced a £6 million debt in two years pretty quickly, well ahead of target, and he suffered the consequences. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It depends what how strong your owners are. If they, they're believing everything you're doing is what they've they have said that and asked you to do. Unfortunately for Jackie, he was let down by the owners. So there's no doubt about that, and he suffered the consequences. And uh, just lucky enough, he's, he's got some, somewhere else very, very quickly. Yep, he's the new manager of York City. The only way is up, Murdo. Third from the bottom of League Two. Uh, and they're playing Accrington Stanley in the Cup at the weekend. There, there's a name that makes me want to go and drink milk. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> um, just picking up on that now, uh, Mixu Patlainen, he yep. wants money to spend. He hasn't got it at the moment. He's got a team there that are coming up against a Hibs side that I was mightily impressed with yep. at the weekend. Well, it's strange. I was at Tannadice at the weekend and I, I read all about Mixu during the week having a real go at the players and I thought, that's the right way to go. Have a go at your players because he can't get any worse. They've not won a game in 10. So he's, he's had to go and rattle a few cages, get in about them. And then at the weekend, the difference on the park was great to watch. You know, they're all running about, they're working for each other. And then the fans get involved. The fans got behind the side because they knew there was a new freshness about them and end up beating Ross County one nothing. So I'm just thinking, if he can do that, and it's maybe the wrong time for, for Hibs getting into United because they've just had their first victory in 10 matches, so they're looking a good side. But it's going to be a fantastic game because I watched the, the, the Rangers-Hibs game and you're, you're looking at a game you think, this is like a top Premier League game. Yeah. And we're, so we're, we're blessed with the quality we've got in the Championship as well. Yeah, um, can you see them causing a shock tonight or would it be a shock, Hibs knocking Dundee United out? I don't know if there's a shock either way. Yeah. Uh, whoever wins, the better, better team will win tonight. But Hibs, <coughs> I think they've got a good quality across the middle of the park. They've got good strikers. It's a big challenge for them. For me <coughs> personally, I'd put uh, Hibs the favourites tonight. Yeah. I think Hibs, the way they've been playing, because <coughs> it slow start to the season, then they've caught up and then beat Rangers at the weekend. So they'll be high as well in confidence. But United, they've got something now to latch on to. They've got a victory at the weekend. Now they can look at trying to get through to the next round. And who's going to win tomorrow night, Ruffy? Oh, I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> impress Murdo. Give us an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, I've, I've, not made, I've, not, I've not made my mind up about that one yet. I, yeah. I, I honestly haven't. Can I say Celtic? Yeah. Can I, say, I, I think Celtic will win. I think there's so much at stake, to, at stake tomorrow night. The fans know it. The players know it. And I think it'll be a night that'll go out and play well. Yeah. Well, based on the fact that this is yeah. the day before the game... Who's going to win? Celtic well, I, I think it'll be tense right up until the last 10 minutes, as it usually is. And hopefully they've not got any set pieces against them and they've won the game comfortably. 
and they can see out the game because that's the only failing that they've had yeah. not being able to see out games well listen we know their failings and yeah. we know where they lose goals but I'm like going to win the game Celtic well eventually we <laughs> got there um, okay um, it's 37 years since you signed for Celtic Murdo this week that's right yes you, you haven't changed <laughs> <laughs> which is absolutely incredible yeah it was a fantastic time no, been a young boy at Dumbarton and playing with Dumbarton <coughs> and then all of a sudden Celtic wanted to sign me and I went along to Celtic Park and met up with Billy McNeil, John Clark. It was just fantastic. Yeah, well, the memories come flooding back for you. How much did you get on a weekly wage there? I did take a drop from <laughs> Dumbarton. <laughs> <laughs> and Celtic came in, did you have any doubts at all about leaving Dumbarton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just amazing knowing no, that a club like Celtic coming along because one or two clubs had been watching me at Dumbarton and then when yeah. I get the chance I get a phone call from Billy to say that uh, Billy's, uh, from Alec Wright sorry, to say that Billy McNeil had bid £100,000 for me and they've accepted that. Yeah. So I had to go up to Celtic Park and do the deal. Magic, absolutely fantastic. You know for a minute there I thought he was going into his after dinner act. <laughs> I thought, don't do it Murdo, you, you'll kill off about 40 gigs. Um, listen, it's been an absolute delight. Uh, with Murdo McLeod in the studio <coughs> rolling back the years 37 years ago he signed up for Celtic and uh, uh, he's been a top man ever since giving us his opinion as well uh, on the Europa League and of course uh, his old club Hibernian he lifted the League Cup with him as if he needed uh, reminding great to have Murdo from Ruffy and myself join us tomorrow night on the programme if you can thanks for watching Thanks for watching Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. If you enjoyed the show and you'd like to see more, then uh, why not go on to plzsoccer.com. All our guests from the full series are there and you can interact with uh, various little competitions that we've got and see some of the other fantastic features in the boot room and dream team as well. So click on there, plzsoccer.com. And of course, uh, not only Monday to Friday, Ruffy, we've got much, much more. Yes, we certainly have. We have live football uh, right through all the divisions, Scotland and England uh, 2 to 6. 2 o'clock till 6 on a Saturday if you want the goals as they hit the back of the net then click on plzsoccer.com. Thanks for watching.